So, what's the most important and powerful overarching technological theme of our generation? To answer this question, um, I'll tell you a brief story which will be very interesting and uh, we'll talk about three companies. The first company is Netflix. You probably all heard about Netflix. Uh, they're very large and delivering global entertainment on all our devices. But very few people remember how Netflix began, namely with uh, a company that was just shipping DVDs and renting them through email, through mail, sorry. Um, in 2010, it turns out that Times Warner CEO was asked what he thinks of, uh, of Netflix and whether Netflix could eventually become a threat to them at some point. To which he responded that this question was very similar to the question of asking, is Albanian army going to take over the world? It was very, very funny at that point, but right now it's not that funny anymore. It's 2019 and Netflix is dominating the global entertainment sector. And it has a market valuation of more than $150 billion and more than 140 million users. So we need to think for a second, how did this all happen? The second story is about the company which uh, we all know about. It's Tesla. And we all take Tesla for granted. But Tesla has redefined the way we look at cars. In Tesla, we essentially have an iPhone on wheels. It's faster, safer, sexier, nearly self-driving, and by the way, it's also electric. But the interesting part is that all of this is powered by state-of-the-art software. So again, I want you to think for a second how this all changes stuff. The third company is Facebook. We all know Facebook. Um, we all know what they emerged and are right now. But Facebook started as a startup that was connecting a few students in some campuses in the United States and has now emerged as having more than 3 billion users. Now, to put this in perspective, if Facebook were a country, it would be larger than China, India, and the US combined. To put it even more bluntly, um, I think it can be argued that at this point, Facebook has a much larger influence and power than perhaps any government in the world. So why does this all matter? Well, if you go with one thing today, I want you to remember this, and this is the theme we'll come to over and over again over the next 10, 20, 30 years. And it's software is eating the world. So how does this all um, relate to blockchain and Elrond? Well, it turns out that blockchain is essentially a piece of software that allows for transfer of value without the need for a trusted third party. But for far too long a time, blockchain has failed to deliver a um, scalable and fast enough infrastructure so that we can use it all, uh, for real world adoption and real world use cases. So to deliver on this, uh, more than two years ago, we started looking at blockchain architectures that were attempting to solve these problems. And after looking at many of them and investing in more than 30 blockchain startups, we noticed that none of them could come up with a compelling solution. So this is how Elrond came along. Uh, we started Elrond with uh, a group of people that are very, very determined, brilliant, with uh, backgrounds in computer science, uh, AI, and the blockchain space. 
and have moved and worked on this problem for more than two years. What emerged is a, a new blockchain architecture that is built from scratch and built, brings a 1,000x improvement in scalability, cost, and execution speed. So all of this is available right now. In short, what Elrond is, is a new blockchain designed from scratch, which can process more than 10,000 transactions per second with a five-second latency and 0.1 cent in transaction cost. The very interesting part is that Elrond technology is working right now, and we're preparing for a mainnet in December. A lot of excitement exists in our community, and a lot of validators and developers are preparing to deploy some very interesting dApps and run nodes on the network. Now, we have uh, many interesting partners that are already building on this technology. But what I want to focus on today is outline the three main, part, the three main use cases we are um, focusing on at Elrond, and then touch upon one of those. Um, the three use cases are decentralized finance, data monetization, and gaming. And it's obvious why we chose this tree. Uh, the, the really important part is um, you'll, you'll see here some uh, partners we already have that are building on Elrond. But the really important part why we chose to focus on decentralized finance is that this has the potential to change everything we see. As we saw before, software startups start pretty small but we are at a point where we can finally deploy software at a global scale with unprecedented speed. So imagine for a second that you would want to build a global financial ecosystem that is permissionless. How would you do it? What would you need to build it? It turns out you only need two things. One is fast, globally accessible internet, and this we already have. The second is a highly scalable blockchain architecture with which you can build all of this. So this is precisely where Elrond comes in. And um, the, the really important part is that we have many, many developers and dApps that are building on things right now. I want to um, close on a final note. About 60 years ago, Korea was lagging behind uh, and was perhaps among the poorest countries in the world. But the people of these countries have spectacularly changed the fortune and dynamics of the country. And Korea has come very, very far along. The question is, how will things look in three, five, or 10 years? As we have seen with software startups, when they take off, they have the potential to change everything for the better. The most interesting thing which unites us all, and we've learned through history, is that whether we're entrepreneurs, engineers, government officials, or investors, Together, we have the power to shape the grand architects of our future. Thank you. Thank you very much.